Welcome to Lesson 7. The learning objective for this lesson is to provide you with a basic understanding of the various types of supported file handling and file management methods available for use with NetCobol for .NET. The topics are traditional COBOL file I.O., open database connectivity or ODBC, .NET streaming I.O., and ADO.NET. One of the really great things about NetCobol for .NET is that even though it's a COBOL compiler that works with the .NET technology, it still retains all of the best things about COBOL. There is support for sequential files, or sometimes known as record sequential files, line sequential files, relative files, indexed or ISAM files, and finally BSAM files. As you know, sequential files have records that are usually read and updated in order, starting with the first record in the file. The same is true for line sequential files, but the principal difference between the two is that there's a line feed or carriage control characters that are used as record delimiters in a line sequential file. If you were to look at a line sequential file with a hex editor, you'd notice that there's a 0D, 0A at the end of each record. When you specify line sequential in your organization statement, you should know that the behavior of the runtime system uh, is that it's going to be reading the record uh, right up until that record delimiter. Now, this is different behavior than some of you may be used to, and is different from uh, organization sequential. With organization sequential, the data is read for a specific number of bytes as defined in the FD. Also supported is the relative file, and records in a relative file can be accessed sequentially, randomly, by record number, or of course dynamically. On the mainframe, you'd know this as RRDS. Speaking of mainframes, many of you have probably worked with vSAM files. In the PC world, the index sequential access method, or ISAM file, is its equivalent. Records can be accessed by specifying the values of items, those would be the record keys, in an indexed files. Now, there are actually two different types of ISAM files that are supported by NetCobol for .NET. Those are the Fujitsu ISAM file and the pervasive Btrieve ISAM file. You should be aware that there are some limitations to the Fujitsu ISAM, which I'll talk about momentarily. There's also support for BSAM files. As you can see here in this table, I've outlined the types of supported files at the top of the table and identified record processing and storage limitations in the table. Keep in mind that this only applies to your more traditional COBOL files. One thing that I wanted to make sure that I point out to you is that there are some important limitations to Fujitsu ISAM files. It's a robust and reliable ISAM file, uh, but there are some size limitations that you need to understand. Also, you should know that there are no commit and rollback capabilities for the Fujitsu ISAM file. Uh, Btrieve itself has a larger capacity and is well tested and robust, and it has those critical commit and rollback capabilities. This feature is important if you're planning on migrating applications from a mainframe, especially for transaction processing applications like CICS applications. Another important technology that's quite common in the PC world is Open Database Connectivity, or ODBC. ODBC is a common interface for accessing data in a heterogeneous environment of relational and non-relational database management systems. ODBC is fully supported by the NetCobol compiler and provides an open, vendor-neutral way of accessing data stored in a variety of databases or files. ODBC simplifies access by providing a common or standard way of accessing data in your program through an application programming interface or API. The only thing that changes is what is essentially an interface layer and a database driver specific to a database management system. ODBC provides a universal data access interface. So with ODBC, an application developer can develop an application and allow it to concurrently access and view data and modify data from multiple diverse databases. Now, over the years, ODBC has become very widely accepted. ODBC is an important industry standard for providing ubiquitous data access for Windows, Unix, Apple, and even mainframe data. 
As I indicated before, there are other ways to access data with your COBOL programs. You'll recall from our discussion about the .NET framework that there's a namespace called System.io. That particular namespace and its children contain all of the necessary functionality for reading and writing files and data streams as well as providing for file and directory manipulation support. Another important technology is ADO.NET. Like ODBC, ADO.NET provides consistent access to various data sources and vendor databases. It can also access data sources exposed through OLEDB and XML. Traditionally, access to databases relied primarily on a connection-based, two-tiered model. As applications become more sophisticated and are deployed on other platforms, such as web-based applications, access to data had to evolve. More and more applications are designed for multi-tier architectures, and that forces programmers to switch to a more disconnected approach to provide better scalability for their applications. This makes ADO.NET the preferred mechanism for accessing relational databases. ADO.NET provides a significant level of scalability and performance and reliability. That, coupled with integration to XML, makes it a preferred technology for many .NET programmers. Now, the ADO.NET classes are found in system.data.dll. When compiling code that uses the system.data namespace, reference both the system.data.dll and the system.xml.dll.